Here we are with another episode of Black Journalists on Journalism. Joey Berry, Donnell Suggs, and today we have Vashti Hurt, founder and editor-in-chief of Carolina Blitz, one of my favorite websites to keep up with the Carolina sports, because otherwise I wouldn't have any idea what's going on. <laughs> Vashti, welcome. Thanks for having me. This is the conversation we've been dying to have. Uh, Zuri and I wanted to make a podcast for Black journalists about Black journalists. We all have stories. We all have our journeys. But I don't know if we had a place where we can sit together and talk about those for people that might not know us. They know us on Twitter. Everybody knows you on Twitter. But <laughs> but what I wanted, what we wanted was to create a place where we can have these conversations where folks can just figure out how we got to where we got. Because it's not always easy. It's not always smooth. And everybody's got a story. So I wanted to um, talk to you about your story. How's it begin? No okay. And how's it going? So um welcome. Sorry. Yeah, uh I'm super interested in chatting with you, Vashti, because uh you've taken, I think, a very interesting route going from banking to sports writing. Oh, which, you guys have done your research. Well, I, don't, I, I don't know. I mean okay. you put it on LinkedIn. But let me <laughs> yeah, let me say, I forgot about LinkedIn. Let me say. There are folks in sports writing who would like to go the other way. So I want to I want to get your sense of that journey that you went on. I mean, coming out of UNC, and that's University of North Carolina, Charlotte. Yeah. Uh, and then getting into banking. I mean, like, what was going on? What, what were you thinking? What was what was happening when you were start, just starting out? Well, you know, you never expect to be... Life will take you on a path that you never really expected, right? So when I went to college, I originally wanted to be a sports psychologist. Kind of ahead of the curve, because now they're more popular. But this was, like, in the early 2000s, where there weren't a lot of, you know, sports psychologists. But I love psychology, and I love sports. So I went to college as a psychology major, minor in communication. I was on the track team at UNC Charlotte. I'm always very active in sports, played sports in high school. And, you know, when you graduate from college, you just want to jump, honestly. And uh, Charlotte is the number two banking cap, banking center in the United States behind New York. So a vast majority of the people who live here work at the time, uh, one of the major banks, they're still here, but at the time, Bank of America and Cobia, which is now Wells Fargo, were both headquartered here in Charlotte. So, you know, the banking, um, banking industry folks. And I just kind of got a job in banking and uh, paid the bills. Uh, I enjoyed it. And, uh, but I was, you know, it was an entry level job. And then, I always thought that, you know, there was more. And I applied for a financial advisor and training program. And, mm. you know, it, it was the first year for Wachovia that was kind of testing it out. And at the time, um, banks saw the value in brokerage. And so instead of kind of outsourcing their brokerage to maybe a Merrill Lynch um, or a Goldman Sachs, they were creating and building up their own brokerage units. So Wachovia had Wachovia Securities, but um, they were trying to trying to build that up. So I applied, got the job. And honestly, I think at the time, I don't know if there were any other licensed Black women stockbrokers in Charlotte for that bank. And that is a major bank, right? Um, they didn't expect me to pass the Series 7. So basically, they give you books. They, they study for your Series 7 give you a week-long crash course. If you pass, good. If you fail, then, you know, pretty pretty tough on Can you. Can you tell folks what the what the Series 7 is? Uh, the Series 7 is the uh, exam that you have to take in order to be a licensed stockbroker. So to trade um, options, stocks, mutual funds. Um, everybody who works on Wall Street has a Series 7 license. Uh, immediately immediately i'm thinking to myself why are you in sports writing what what, what is going on here you know, like, this is crazy but, but, but i want to hear the story break it down for me how you go from this moment of, of having this accomplishment again being the only black woman doing it and then obviously to this journey and look to i'm thinking founder. to myself there's no way someone thought i was going to hear about a series seven on this podcast but here we are <laughs> 
Yes. Well, you know, it's interesting because yeah, the parallels between banking and sports journalism as a Black person um, and as a Black woman are crazy. Uh, so nobody expected me to pass the test. And once I passed the test, it was like, okay, what are we doing with this? What are we going to do with this 20-some-year-old Black girl? Because, you know, we didn't expect her to pass the test on her first try anyway. So the... I'm going to try to condense it. Basically, the the program where you were supposed to pair up with a senior advisor, and then they were allowed to work the bottom of their book, and um, then you would then grow your own book of business. Well, nobody wanted to work with me. So I was kind of thrust into this world of financial advising with a license, with all the tools and backing of a bank, but really no knowledge, uh, if that's that sounds right. You know, I passed the test, but we all know, you know, you can read a book but on how to work a camera, but that doesn't mean you're going to be able to take good pictures. So that's kind of, you know, that's kind of how it was. I uh, self-taught. I had to basically learn everything on my own. It was just a really rough road. I was very isolated. Nobody really talked to me. Um, and, uh, you know, I ended up leaving that situation but a black woman with a series seven is highly coveted. So I would, I, I quickly learned I would leave one job and I would get another job within two weeks. So I would say, okay, now try me. I'm going to leave. And so I left there. I, I worked at Bank of America. I worked at Hewitt. I worked at TIA Craft. And um, I made my rounds. And the breaking point probably was when my favorite job, I worked on the trading floor which I absolutely liked um, for Wells Fargo. I enjoyed placing trades, doing options, uh, you know, just the basic raw stockbroker thing. You know, you call me, you want to buy this at this strike price. You want to you wanna, you wanna hedge it with an option. Like that kind of stuff I enjoyed. It didn't involve selling. It didn't involve trying to, you know, any, you know, shiesty type of tactics. But I left that job for more money and a better title. Uh, to be a private banker, they lured me from the brokerage side to the bank side because well, Wells Fargo's model is the way that it is. And everything that they say about Wells Fargo's banking practices are true. Okay. <laughs> um, we'll get into it. <laughs> everything that they say about their banking practices are true. And I was asked to do some pretty unethical things. And, and at that point, I was like, I was getting up. Now, mind you, I was in a very stable situation financially. Um, but I hated what I was doing. And when I reached a certain age, I'm not going to tell you the age, but when I reached a certain age, I was like, I think this is not what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. So, you know, that summer I prayed about it. I was like, God, please reveal to me what I'm supposed to do. Um, and I've, honestly, I was always tweeting about, not tweeting at the time, I was posting on Facebook about sports. Um, I really wasn't a MySpace kind of girl, so it was more Facebook, some um, Twitter, and then, um, and it's, you know, people don't really, I don't know his reputation now, but at the time, I started writing for Black Sports Online, and I wrote for Rob for years, um, which now, looking back at the situation, I was providing a lot of free labor and free help um, because I just really just wanted to get my foot in the door. And, and probably, looking back, I probably shouldn't have. But I was literally on the, on the trading floor, placing trade for its articles. And it got to the point where I was like, I've covered, I'll never forget, I posted about this several weeks ago. I covered my first basketball game. I grew up a huge college basketball fan. I'm going to tell you guys which team, but I grew up a huge college basketball fan. And I covered that team in the NCAA tournament. And I was like, this is it. Like, this is what I want to do. And at that point, you know, I was still had a full-time job in banking and was still kind of doing sports on the side. And you know how sometimes you, it's, it's hard to leave the comforts of a, of a check. No. So, um, <laughs> you know, during the, the the banking collapse, they started laying off people left and right in banking, especially in banking. 
And they were like, well, you guys are making too much money. Uh, so they, so I got laid off. And I was like, this is my time. And I haven't worked a full-time job outside of what I do now since then. And it's been, you know, it's been a labor of love. Uh, I spent my time grinding, grinding the pavement, putting in a bunch of applications, you know, just wanting somebody to see me and say, okay, well, you know, she may bring something different to the business and it just didn't happen. And so like my true entrepreneurial self, shout out to my dad, RIP. I was like, you know what? If they don't see value in me, I see it in myself. And I'm just going to create a platform where I am their competitor. Um, and uh, I did my research on uh, which, how, um, digital sports platforms were going and they were going more toward niche niche sites uh so you know not necessarily a site that covers the entire sports realm but maybe like carolinas you know in charlotte we have carolina panthers charlotte hornets and a lot of those fans are cross fans right unc do um so i didn't necessarily want to do a specific team because I had already established connections within the college basketball community. So I created Carolina Blitz as kind of a new site for Carolina sports. And um, yeah, it's been a blessing. I mean, we grind it. We're working. So that's kind of kind of how I got to where I am. And my mind was a journalist and it's crazy how we kind of follow in the footsteps of our parents. Uh, and you know, she was she went to Columbia School of Journalism. So she is like one of the true you know, refined journalists. And I and I grew up having her correct my papers. Can you imagine that? So, um, so yeah, that's kind of how I got to where I am now and got from being a stockbroker to being a sports writer. I bet you a lot of stuff you learned on the floor, trading stocks you use today, and those scrums in the locker rooms and whatnot. Absolutely. Not just that, also in business. Mm. You know, being a business owner, you learn how to navigate people, um, navigate contracts, uh, create uh, marketing material. This is all stuff that I literally had to do for myself when I was out there by myself. And so it kind of, you know, it, 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 it afforded me a lot of the tools that I use now um, uh, and as a business owner and in the sports industry. You know, I put you in a, that category of entrepreneurs and, and you are early onset entrepreneur for, for folks that are just now doing the, let me start my own website, let me start my own news thing, whatever it may be. And so I think it's really cool to hear about this journey and really just, you know, finding the passion, doing it basically for free while you're doing your day job. And then, you know, obviously getting a kick in the butt there with a layoff and then going out on your own, especially if you're not getting opportunities elsewhere. I want to ask you about that time period there where there was that um, I'm not really getting opportunities. Let me start it myself. Like, what was that? What, were, what was going through your mind? What, was, what, what were you doing in order to sort of put yourself out there, put your site out there and, and really make a name for yourself? Um, you know, I, I bought the domain and I know I wanted to do something with it. And I remember a specific story that really kind of catapulted me. So there was a guy named Cam Newton who was a very central figure here in Charlotte. And then there was a controversy, there was a huge controversy that was covered nationally where he talked about, where he said it was funny to hear a woman reporter talk about routes. I don't know if you guys remember that. Yeah, I remember that. I, and, I remember. Okay. Um, so that, also the coverage of Cam that Cam was getting when he was dabbing, um, I just didn't feel like it was fair I didn't think that it uh, had a, I don't I didn't think that it came from a place of cultural understanding uh, and I just I just did not like there to me there wasn't a voice um, for the people honestly uh, in Cam Newton coverage specifically and so I was getting inside information about what transpired uh, between him and, and the reporter, who, who I'm cool with now, we've discussed it. Uh, but, you know, I put it out there, you know, the, the Observer at the time was writing editorials about, you know, champion women, and these are the same people who see me and don't speak. And I'm like, y'all are so fake. 
you know, this is not the energy that y'all have out in public. Um, uh, you know, so they would write something and I would write something to counter it. And, you know, they were they they would kind of paint him as this, you know, chauvinistic pig. And I would say this is not the experience that I've had with Kim and, you know, all of the all of the celebration. And, you know, so that's kind of what led me to really you know, that's when people kind of look. I said, oh, OK, this girl, this young woman, she she has something to say. And, she, and I at the time, you know, I'm working for myself. So I didn't care who I was writing about. You know, I had no desire at the when I decided I wanted to start my own business. I was going to go full throttle with that. It wasn't, I'm going to start my whole business so eventually the offshore observer could hire me. I don't want to work for the observer. So to have that autonomy allowed me to speak about issues that other people may not speak about and then also take on colleagues in a way that other people might not do that. And, that, and, it's, and it's crazy, the same people who, don't, who used to not speak to me and acknowledge my presence now are coming to me for for you know you know insight and you know and it's crazy how things have kind of changed but that that cam newton coverage was really what did it for me and um i said okay I, I, there needs to be another voice in charlotte period um regarding regarding cam newton and why not me i'm saying talk some more about the fact that you didn't have corporate sponsors that you had to kind of make sure you didn't upset or you didn't have a managing editor and an editor-in-chief and a publisher that you might have upset. There's a certain freedom in that in a way. Please talk some more about that. I yeah. think it's really important people to know that. It means a lot. And, you know, I talk, I have colleagues who I speak with and, you know, I'm amazed at some of their experiences when it comes to maybe uh, proposing a story that may push them or proposing a story that might address racial issues specifically or even covering something that might be lighthearted. Like, you know, Cam Newton was a character. For, and, I'm, and I'm going back to him because it's kind of how things got rolling, but people weren't talking about his outfits a long time ago. He was always dressed. Kind of, but I started doing that. And now it's like you have whole sites dedicated. You have weathermen who used to copy off uniform a copy off of his off of his outfits and now you know get a million followers off of it so you know it having the freedom to really talk about what i want to talk about but more importantly getting the post from the fans and my and the people who i know come to carolina bliss for information and being able to get that and run and not have to run it through a channel it's it's important. So if I see it's something that I feel like needs to be addressed, that's why I'm here. And I, and it's always in a professional manner. And yeah, I don't, you know, I might not have a managing editor to to report to. I am the managing editor. Right. Um and, and my writers, you know, I allow them, you know, I have them come to me with story ideas, but I, I give them the freedom to really write about what they're passionate about because that's when you get good stuff. And so it, that's why I said when I told when I said I, I people said, oh, I'll see you on ESPN one day. I mean, only if I'm representing Carolina Blitz. I don't need I don't need Big Brother telling me what I can and cannot do. That that really is the rawness um, and the fun of being of working for yourself. And um, you know, I, I, I try to encourage, I don't ever encourage anybody to go the independent route because it's not easy. But even, you know, if I have a colleague who said, man, I, I, I promoted that I went to my managing editor about this story and I wrote a thousand words and they cut it down to 500 and they cut out the meat of the, of the article and I'm so discouraged and I want to bring something new and fresh, but they want to do this old school journalism. You know, I don't, I don't do the, uh, what was it? Uh, you want to, you don't want the uh, producer dancing all in your videos, you know. Uh, I don't tell them, I don't tell them to come to death row. You know, I do encourage, I do encourage people to, you know, to try to find other outlets. Like, you don't necessarily have to write. I mean, you can find other outlets to channel your creativity. Um, and, but, 
you know, the, as you mentioned, that's important that I don't have to, I don't have a channel that I have to run up to it. And, and I don't know. I, lo- I really like that. I appreciate that. So you, you mentioned uh, about the dynamic at that time and specifically with the Cam Newton coverage, which I remember. And I, I actually remember your reporting uh, from that time period. And uh, I, I just wonder about the, the press corps that was covering the team then. And I, I, I had questions. I wasn't in that locker room. I was in the New England Patriots locker room at mm-hmm. that time. And there's, you know, a handful of us in that locker mm-hmm. room there. I think it was me, Shalise Manza Young, Monique Walker, now Monique Jones. And we were all Boston Globe people. And like there was like one other and, and Chris Gasper. Um, but t- tell me about the press corps situation then and, and how has that changed over time? Uh, back then... And 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 honestly, at the time, I was not credentialed to cover the Panthers. I was really covering from the outside in. I knew people who would give me information, but at the time, I wasn't credentialed to cover them. But from from what I know of the the press corps, then it was basically um, Joe Person, who's been there a while, David Newton. At the time, Jordan Rodriguez was there, Jonathan Jones, uh, and a couple of other people. So that that's basically it when it came to the core Panthers coverage. Of course, you had TV. Um, and now, when I go to other stadiums, the Panthers really have a they really have a diverse core group, and it, and it's really good to see. Um, so I'm there, Sheena Quick. And who's another black woman? She covers the Panthers. Um, Ellis Williams covers the Panthers for the uh, Observer. Um, you have uh, I'm drawing a, a person at Newton. They're still there. Um, you have uh, diversity among the TV people who, who who cover the team on a regular basis. There, Shadow Deshawn, um, Deshawn Brown. She covered. She works for the CBS affiliate. That's another black woman. It's crazy because when we when when so for example when Thomas Brown came in and you and you sit down and you see three black women front row, you're kind of like, whoa, yeah. I wasn't expecting this, you know? It's different here, and, you know? It's different. Like understand, it's different. We're gonna give you a different flow. We're gonna be true to ourselves. We're not gonna get the, you know, you're not gonna get one thing in one space or one thing in another space, it's going to be consistent. And so, so yeah, we have, we have, I think that they have a more diverse group of coverage and, and, and that's something that I would commend the Panthers PR team on is having, you know, having now at this point, and I don't know, you know, I email the Panthers every day. I know the guy, and I didn't email the PR people. I emailed one of the top people every day. Until I got a response. And I know they were like, man, please respond to this lady so she'll stop emailing me. <laughs> please. Well, like, I, I, I don't just, accept no. Like, right. like what, what we doing? What are we going to do with it? Because you could tell, you could ignore, eventually you're going to say, man. So, you know, there's a vetting process, you know, oh, come to an open locker room, you know, see how you work, how you interact. We're going to monitor what you do. We're going to read your articles. We're going to listen to what you say on the radio. And then finally, you know, you have more access and more access, and then you're part of the, you know, the beat, per se. The, but, the inner circle, yeah. if you will. Yeah. Well, I just, I'm just thinking about Charlotte itself. I mean, this is a black city in a lot of respects. And, and no, I, I would say there was it's a not black Atlanta man, black, black. No. Fire department, chair, black. There's but there's black more black everywhere. Involved. Are you in yeah, no. still? <laughs> no, I'm in D.C. Oh, now, oh, which is Chocolate black. City, or at least well, it, it's chocolate. Everything light. is more black. <laughs> Everything's more black than Boston. It's milk chocolate. <laughs> yeah. It used to be Chocolate City, but yeah, you know, it, it, we, we're, it's a black. It's, it's, it's not a black city, but yeah, they're, they're a good amount of us. So many black people in leadership across the city. Yeah. I mean, I'm just I'm thinking Mayor Vilao is mm-hmm. off the top of my head just right now. But but just this this transition that we're seeing which you're seeing that increase in diversity covering the team it's reflected in maybe how players like a cam newton might be covered Mm -hmm. um 
but that's a, that's a good thing. That's a positive thing to see over time. And it, it's remarkable that we're talking about this because this is only what eight years ago, set six seven years ago. However, it was when you started Carolina Blitz. Like it's not that long ago that this was problematic, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And 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 you know, it's the times now too. Listen, we have always set the culture. Now it's just being put on main screen. I mean, we have Kim Malarkey, and I I don't agree with her politics, but she's up there gritty. And I'm like, okay, now it's officially time to retire this. But what I'm saying is we set the trends, right? We make the culture. And if you want your team to be cool, right? If you want your coverage to be cool, then you have to have people who have a certain, you know, coolness to them to help your coverage and listen i see some of my stuff all the time after i look at panthers.com i'm like i know y'all got that for me i'm gonna let y'all i'm gonna let y'all cook but i know y'all got that for me everybody's always watching and so it's important because honestly those guys and i'll give you an example so last year lavishka chanel wore black air forces to the game we know what it means when somebody wears black air forces so and he had a monster game. Like his first catch went for like an 80 yard touchdown. So in the locker room after the game, you know, Sheena and I, we were looking like, oh, you wore black forces. So we should have known what was uh. up. And so all the other reporters were like, what does that mean? And, but they're picking up on it. But that's something culturally that, that you know, I then see you on Panthers.com or I have a reporter pull me to the side and ask me what it means to wear black forces. Like, it's just a different way to co- more colorfully cover the players that you have on your team. And then also develop a rapport other than, oh, well, tell me about this play and how did this go, you know? When you and Sheena host Twitter spaces during the football season, those spaces are full of folks. And I hear over and over again how folks say this is the source. Y'all two are the source for them for Carolina Panthers football, for example. And I want to know for you, how does that make you feel when you know you come full, I won't say full circle, you come a long way from trying to get a credential to being the source for so yeah. many people to get information about who y'all going to draft or whatever. It's crazy. The other day I was in the airport and I was, I was on the phone and I said my name and this guy turned around and was like, you're bastard. And I was like, yeah. I was like, I listen to you on the radio all the time. And I'm blind, like, wow, like, you know, to to have a uh, a group of people who will come to Carolina Blitz for their for our coverage or look to us for breaking news. Uh, I haven't I don't do a I I I don't do a ton of breaking news, but once it's broken, I also I, I like to give a voice to the fans. Um, and and that's another big component of Carolina Blitz, and I think that they appreciate that. But it always blows me when like people find out and they're like, "Oh, I follow you." I'm like, "For real?" You know, it's 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 definitely definitely reassuring because I think we all have our moments of, "Is this? Am I doing the right thing? Am I on the right path?" Um, and when stuff gets hard. It, when stuff gets tough, something like that always continues to happen. And it's so to just tell you, keep going, with it, you know, keep, keep, keep moving. Um, you're, you're on the right path here. It may not pop off like, like that, but you're moving forward. You have continued progression and, and, you know, you're able not only to, you're able to now, uh, I have four writers who write for me. And, you know, that was always important to me to have others who I was able to give an opportunity that, you know, I wasn't afforded. And not just that, but also be able to pay them. I did not want anybody who wrote for Carolina Blitz to write for free. It's just, just you know, where, it, it, you know, so, yeah. It's, you had that experience. <laughs> I've had that experience for years. And, yeah, so it's just, it, it's dope. It, it really is. Now, you just said a couple of things that were really cool to hear. And, and, and just going back to just the launching of the, the site, 
I mean, you, you walked us through a little bit about how you differentiate, how you were, you know, looking at the landscape there in Charlotte, whether it's the Observer or TV, whatever, and saying, this is how we're going to be different. So that way we gain an audience, we build an audience. I mean, you got to cultivate that. And I would say that there was nothing there like that. Was that in the plan or was that just came about organically? I mean, tell us about that. I wanted something, I wanted to create something that I could relate to and I would enjoy. Uh, it had gotten to the point where I was getting my news from the observer. I was getting my news from social media. And that's honestly where it's going now, right? People are getting their news from Twitter, God forbid, Facebook, but they're getting it from there too. Um, and other social media platforms. And I wanted to be able to get hardcore sports updates and stats, but also be able to, you know, get, see what, how people are reacting or laugh at memes that people are, are, are putting out. So honestly, if I think it's cool and interesting, I post about it. And other people kind of think it's cool and interesting too. And so... You know, I'm kind of I'm I'm feeding the people what I think is is good content, and thankfully they're enjoying it as well. And, and I think for me, it's important to have a good mix of analysis, just just basic news, and then also fun type stories. Um, and and just to have that have that mix where you know you're able to 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 get everything from, from one source. I think what makes Carolina Blitz uh, really special from uh, many of the websites, not saying better, just saying it's special, you're going to travel with the team. And you don't get a lot of that. I'll see you in New York uh, with Duke, or I'll see you at UNC across the country somewhere, and I'm like, wow, that's why that's a go-to source for the sport, because a lot of us have been, all three of us have been in locker rooms, dot, dot, dot. Everyone doesn't get that experience. But if you follow a Carolina Blitz, for example, you can roll with North Carolina the whole season, basically, through your website. I think that's really special. You talk about the fact that you thought, hey, I got to get this thing past just a couple of home games. Yeah, and that was important to me because you never know what's going to pop mm -hmm. off. On the road, um, at home, you know, I'm going to go when UNC plays Johnson C. Smith. And I'm going to go when UNC plays Duke. It's just what it is. It's we're equal opportunity here because you just don't know what you're gonna get. And if by chance I'm able, and, and the, I feel guilty if I miss if I'm if I miss a game for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, I travel. I I go to to these games. It's a different feel. And then people who aren't able to travel, I try to give them the experience of what you might not see. TV gives you a view of what's going on. But, you know, you can get stuff outside of the TV as well that could give you more of an experience of, of that game. And that's what I try to do. And also, you know, the players appreciate it. Then you get to know them. They see you. Oh, she's going to the games. You know, you know, I have players who will follow me after the fact, uh, college players, you know, because they appreciated what I brought to that press uh, group. And so, yeah, it, that's always been important. Not only does it add credibility, um, but it also allows me to 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 give a, a different perspective and and to let you know people know, oh, she's really riding with us as a as a reporter. Um, because honestly, with cutback, like I see I see budget cuts everywhere, right? right? I know the athletic wasn't sending their writer to some of the games, and I'm like, oh, well, I'll be there. Carolina Blitz will be mm. there. We'll be there with the coverage. So, you know. Mm. Mm. An I, another differentiating I, factor. You know, we, we, we're, not, we're not, we don't have to go to, I go to the budget department, but the budget department has already said, okay, this is what you're going to go to make, go to these things because, you know, when you're front and center, then they look at Carolina Blitz as a credible source, right? If I'm never anywhere, they're going to be like, oh, okay, she's just home chilling, right. watching the games. No, I'm there. Wait, so let me just understand what you just said there. Go to the budget center. Are, are, aren't you the budget center? What, how does this I work? Am the I, I, I don't have to go. I go to the budget <laughs> center, which is the business banking right. account. 
But yeah, um, exactly. It, it but, works. But it works. <laughs> it works. And you know, I I have I have you know as 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 a business woman, um, we find ways to make it work. And I have found ways to make it work, and it is working. And so uh, we get where we need to be. Well, let, let me ask you this. Because I, I find this interesting because not all startups are alike, right? Some are more successful than others. And a sign of success, I think, is being able to travel, particularly covering sports teams, because that, that's humongous yeah. right there. When did you guys get to the point where you were uh, making enough revenue to be able to go out and do all of these trips and, and, and cover the team in this way? I always travel. You know, so from the very beginning, from the very beginning, that's something that I wanted to do. I go into the game. I really and thoroughly enjoyed. Right. Um, and so that's always something that if I'm going to do this, I'm going to be I'm going to travel to these games and I'm going to figure out how I can make it work. Now, I was spending a lot of personal money on traveling, you know. Sometimes you hit up somebody, I'm going to be in your city. What's up? Can I stay with you? You know, just certain, certain, you know, you may, you may drive. I don't drive anymore. We, we're on flights now. But um, so, you know, you, you may hit up somebody and you may stay on their sofa. Like, I remember I have a cousin in New York. ACC tournament was in Brooklyn for like a couple of years. I'm like, New York for seven days is expensive. Um, you know, so... Cause can I stay at your place for seven days? Like you know, one year I, I bumped at her sofa. The next year I was able to get a hotel room. So you know, you see the growth, and um, you do what you have to do to make it work. I mean, this is this is the story of my people, and um, this is you know, this is a, I, I come from a lineage of business owners who make it work and you figure it out. And, um, and, and, you know, sometimes you, you, you go for it and you worry about, you worry about the chips, how they fall later on. And it always seems to work itself out. So that, that's, that's how I move. But covering and traveling, I always knew would be a part of Carolina Blitz because, and probably because the first game that I ever covered, I was on the road and I covered that game for the road. And my mom was like, man, that's how you really gave me a, uh, uh, and she's not a huge sports fan um, through, through me, but she was like, man, you really gave me, I really felt like I'm at the game with your coverage. And I want others to feel that way, casual fans, hardcore fans. Um, so yeah, being able to travel, that's always been, that's always been on the list of must-haves. So knowing what we know about Carolina Blitz right now, Somebody calls you from whatever particular staff, quote unquote, mainstream uh, media company and says, hey, look, we love what you're doing. You have a unique way of doing it. Can we partner with you? What, what do they have to do to get with you or can they even get with you? Well, okay. partner is fine. Absolutely. I, 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 we will partner as long as I maintain ownership of Carolina Blitz and what we have going on with Carolina Blitz. Um you know, I, we can come on, just give Carolina Bliss that credit. I can give you, you know, my opinion about things as a representative of Carolina Bliss. Uh, you know, that's just how it would be. Uh, I think at this point, it would be very difficult for me to be an employee uh, for someone. Uh, but yeah, like even like my next thing, and I'm speaking this into existence, guys. I'm gonna have a radio show in Charlotte when they're on their top radio station for sports. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm. This is I'm manifesting this right, but I will do that, and I will still have Carolina Blitz. Like this is everything. Carolina Blitz is is mine, and and it's my baby, and I'm not gonna give it up for adoption. Set. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, there, there's so many things that you just said that were just kind of inspirational. You're talking about risk taking, you're talking about Maybe. making it work. I mean, I'm loving it. And I'm wondering, you've got college hoops, you've got football. For you professionally, what's more satisfying? Covering hoops? Covering the Panthers? What do you, what do you like? So there are levels to this, right? The NFL is granddaddy. 
So whenever I walk in an NFL stadium as founder and editor in chief of Carolina Blitz and a member of the Carolina Panthers press corps, there's a sense of pride that comes with that, right? Like, shoulders get a little high when I, when I, when I walk in. Like, you know, head is a little higher. Um, not that it isn't when I cover college basketball, but I am, I love college basketball. So it's a different joy that I get. So there's more, there's a lot of pride that I get with covering the NFL because I know how the NFL is. Um, but I get a lot of joy from covering college basketball. There's just, you know, and, you know, I grew up watching UNC and Duke, those programs. Julius Peppers, I didn't know he played football because I didn't watch football back then. I thought he was a basketball player because I was, a, you know, I watched hoops. So when I found out he was a better football player than he was a basketball player, I was like, I thought he was just a big, big player for UNC. So that, that college hoops is, is, is I love college hoops. That's, that's, you know, I will not miss an ACC tournament. Like that, that's kind of like my spring vacation, just, you know, just an all day college basketball, good competition. I love that. But I did, there's a, there's a definite sense of pride. When when I cover the Panthers. Now I heard you on a radio show, uh, and you were talking about how you're you're still working with the Hornets, trying to figure out you guys are gonna figure each other out. How's that looking so far? They're not playing that well, so it's not a priority. But you know, I haven't applied my full court press to the Hornets mm -hmm. because, um, like I did the Panthers, because I know once I did, I have to be present, right? So I can't. And listen, be, because I'm a black woman, right? Because I am independent, I always know that my leash is a lot shorter than a lot of other people, right? I know that I have to do things differently. I have to move differently. I have to carry myself differently. Um, you know, I have to, the eyes are different on me. So I have to make sure when they say yes, they want to say yes, I'm there. And I'm making a name for myself. Time-wise, that's difficult because, you know, I covered three teams. And um, that's one of the things I have to get better at in delegating stuff to, to my staff um, and to my writers. Uh, but I'm going to apply the press to the Hornets. And I'm, we're going to get in at the Hornets. Uh, I just have to make sure I have the time to establish Carolina Blitz like I was able to with the Panthers so that they put some more respect on my name. <laughs> yeah, that actually leads me to the other question I wanted to ask you, which is like, uh, is there any love for any of these other teams? Because Charlotte is now becoming a sports hub. I mean, they got a uh, soccer club. They got all these different things. Do you see expansion at all in the works in that respect? You know, we covered the first soccer game. And I know my wheelhouse. This is one thing that I have learned. If I don't know about something, I am not going to pretend that I know about it, right? I think that that's where some people get caught up. You know, they'll speak on a topic they don't know. Then somebody calls them out and they look stupid. You're not going to catch me out here looking stupid. I would have to find somebody who knows soccer and get them to cover the soccer team. That is something that I do plan on doing this summer. Um, I have the access vis-a-vis, um, -vis, you know, the Panthers and, and them knowing and being able, to, they will, being able to vouch for me. I just am not, you know, I, I'm not well-versed enough to cover it myself. Uh, and I do want to do more high school hoops. High school hoops and high school football. Those young kids do not get enough coverage in my eyes. Um, Charlotte is a hoop state. There's a lot of talent that comes out of North Carolina. I'm sorry, North Carolina is a hoop state. There's a lot of talent that comes out of North Carolina. I have parents who reach out to me all the time. And, you know, the kids want the exposure. They need the exposure, especially with the transfer portal kind of changing everything when it comes to, to prep, uh, prep basketball. So I'm going to definitely, I may do that before I do the Hornets, but that's another thing. Um, that I want to do as far as growth. And listen, when I started Carolina Blitz, you know, we still are, we still a business. So I started Carolina Blitz with the anticipation that there could be a DMV Blitz or a Georgia Blitz or a New York Blitz. 
So that is also, you know, a way that I have when I structure this this company. Um, that is something that you know I always thought about, you know, expanding in that way to to cover to uh, to to encompass other states to bring freshness to their coverage as well. So that's all like, you know, we, when we put together the plan, you know, I, I kind of thought all of that. That Friday night high school basketball thing, that's a cool lane right there. The way you do Power the Pro. I, they needed yeah, yeah. it. I know. I, yeah. I just got, I got to figure, time-wise, I, I got to figure it out. And I, I need to hire an assistant, but, you know, the way my travel budget is set up, we, we got to be. We stuck. <laughs> We gotta be our own assistant mm. right now. So I, once I get priorities, that project, priorities. Right, um, you know, maybe I maybe I'll start with a game of the week. But there's a lot, there's a lot of talent in the hoop state, and um, I wanna I wanna get some shine to some of those some of those kids who are, who are out here balling. So my my question for you, and I know we're running up on our time here. What advice do you have for uh, journalists, sports journalists out there, or anybody? for that matter, that are thinking about starting or launching their own site, what may, what, what would you would have wanted to know when you was getting going? Stay true to yourself. Uh, I think for me, that, that was the key. I approached sports journalism like I did stock brokers, and there are a lot of parallels when it comes to a lack of diversity. Um, uh, you know, Silvanism, um, that kind of stuff. But I also know when I started, and it's crazy because when I, when I covered that first NCAA tournament game, everybody was, and I dressed in a way that I felt was professional, but was true to me, right? And at the time, I'm in my, and I'm in my 20s. So, you know, I wasn't out here looking crazy, but I had on a cardigan and some jeans, I think, and some, some boots or whatever. And they would triple check my credential everywhere I would go. It was like, you don't look like you belong here. Let me see your credential. Turn your credential around. Turn your credential around. So I switched up how I dress. So then it became cardigans and skirts and, you know, little, little flats. And while that was cute, it wasn't me. You know, I'm kind of like a girly tomboy. And I wish I would have known to continue to be true to myself. Whether they're going to double or trick your, they don't double or triple check your credentials regardless, right? That's just going to happen. Because a lot of people don't believe that you belong in this space or you, you don't look like the norm in this space. This is why when you see people who sneak into games, they never look right. like us, right? Because they not checking their credentials like they're You so busy checking my credentials. Five people, people just walked over there. Their breaths. Their breaths. walking right down the floor. And you all looking at me because I'm trying to get a hot dog. So, you know, um, but stay true to yourself. Um, don't ever feel like, and I think, I, I don't know if it's called an imposter syndrome, but you know, when you are, sometimes you question whether you belong, right? And, and it's crazy because before I had a fan base, it was players kind of speaking like to me. Oh, I see you, sister. I see you doing your thing. You know, keep, keep going. And, um, Always understand that you belong in that space. Um, don't feel like you got to compete with your other people because the table is big enough and plush enough for us all to eat. So look at your, look at your, don't look at the sister who is next to you as somebody you feel like you got to be saint to and compete with because you can work together and everybody can all eat. And uh, finally, don't take no as an answer. It's just a nap. You know, okay, mm. that you, we gonna swing back around. You can tell me no. All right, that's cool. I'll see you next next week, or I'll see you next year. Um, so those are the things that I had to kind of learn. Um, you know, oh no, okay, no, let me send this follow up email. Okay, well, is it still no? Who's above you? Let me send this email. What's going on? <laughs> So, so those are the it. things. Stay true to yourself. Don't feel like you got to compete with your with your brothers and sisters in the business. And um, don't take no for an answer. And keep going. Keep blitzing. You know, it 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 doesn't have to pop off immediately. 
Like, I think people think, like, my the best example is Monica McNuck, right? She's everywhere, right? When I, when I was in Washington, D.C., covering, that was a Zion year, Monica was volunteering for the NCAA tournament. She came up to me and was like, you know, sis, what you doing? What you got going on? I'm just networking with people. And she was like, I've been trying to get this thing going for so long. I'm just about to, you know, she was teaching classes, like workout class. And then all of a sudden, I right. everywhere. And people think, oh, she just popped off. She did her work. She kept going. She didn't take no for an answer. And so, you know, even if it doesn't pop off, people are so used to instant gratification because of going viral. And that going viral, it 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 flashes in the pan and it just is out, you know, keep going. Don't don't expect for that instant gratification. As long as you see progress, that should be enough. Wonderful, wonderful. Where can people hear you, see you, uh um, and follow you? Uh, you can follow me. Well, the business is at Carolina Blitz, CarolinaBlitz.com. Keep blitzing on Twitter and uh, Carolina Blitz on. You look up Carolina Blitz, we're pretty much everywhere. And if you search my name, that's what I heard. I do have personal accounts that aren't business related, but they kind of do blend sports and a little bit of my personality. Um, Donnell, you follow my oh, the, personal The IG account, account is so. a must. The post, the post game, the post game huh? account is a must. All day. I'm a, I, I check that so, every Sunday at about 6, 7 o'clock. So yeah. So yeah, it, it, you get a different, you get a different vibe Absolutely. with each one. But I'm social, so. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, Vashti, uh, thank you so much for your time. I mean, this has been a wonderful conversation. Um, and as usual, you know, you you've dropped so, so many, many jewels and gems for for folks that are going to listen to this. So we appreciate it. Vashti says, it. "Don't take thank no for an answer right now. It's just not right now. That's perfect. Not no, it's just yeah, not, not right, right now." now. I love that. Exactly. It's a lot. On, it's a lot for me to put on the t-shirt. But I'm gonna try. <laughs> I'm 